information just in terms of our sort of presence in the room to sort of uh, create that given our, uh, is, is great. Um, uh, I know many of you <coughs> in this space. Um, uh, my name is Derek Goldman. I'm the co-facilitating this um, session uh, with Teresa Eyring, who uh, all of you know um, as executive director of CCG. Um, I'm uh, based at Georgetown University with the Lab for Global Performance and Politics. My two colleagues in the back, Jojo uh, Roof is our managing director of the lab, and Teddy Roger is our um, uh, um, communications and global connectivity manager. Um, and uh, G GTI, Global Theater Initiative, is a partnership between CCG and the lab. Um, some of you know about it already. We'll share a little bit of what, of, uh, uh, what it is. It's been around for a couple of years. The last two TCG conferences, we've actually done full, full day free conferences, one in Washington, one in Portland, um, uh, and a whole range of other uh, activities and um, programs. Um, and um, the lab is based at Georgetown <coughs> in Washington with a mission to harness the power of performance to humanize global politics. Uh, we do a wide range of work. We're a little unusual as being a kind of theater-based initiative housed in a school of foreign service and a school of international relations. Um, and there are an awful lot of sort of institutional networks and affiliations and ecosystems that kind of uh, overlap and intersect. Uh, a lot of exciting work that's going on. Um, I think the biggest hope for this session is less to sort of speak at you about those and really take stock of like who's come into this space and why and with what ideas and projects and to kind of get a sense of what's happening in terms of uh, global work and how TCG is already part of that or might be poised to kind of contribute um, more. Um, one of the functions of, join us, um, one of the functions of uh, Global Theater Initiative is that we serve as the, hi Teresa. Hi. 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 everybody. It's a very full hi. room. Yes. So exciting to see so many internationalists. I was just starting by framing things up a little bit. Um, so, um, one of our functions is we serve as the uh, U.S. Center of ITI, the International Theater Institute, um, and we can share some uh, updates about uh, what that is um, and opportunities in that area. Um, but I, I think we, uh, I think pretty er quickly, it would be actually great to kind of just have to, to go around the space and get a sense of who's coming into the room and from where. Um, and then uh, to share updates and to kind of get into a, 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 a conversation about, um, about the global work that's happening and to sort of, uh, um, it feels like there's a lot of momentum in this area. Um, and uh, you know, the, the goal of the Global Theater Initiative is really about relationship building and amplifying work and creating networks and opportunities for us, I think oftentimes we feel like we're doing this work in, uh, without a lot of, oh, it's like, oh, there's someone over here who's also doing that, and to try, um, and we've been working very intentionally over a couple of years to try to develop some um, network systems to be, um, to be taking better stock of the kind of work that's happening. And by saying, and it's a kind of very happy surprise that this room is as full as it is, so I think that's something we should take advantage of and make sure we mind what's here. You want to? <coughs> did, you, did you give any background in terms of progress over the last few years? I didn't go into detail about yeah. GTI activities. Okay. Um, uh, going back to Cleveland, mm -hmm. how many people were at the Cleveland conference? So we had a, a lunch meeting then that also was very, very full of people who are uh, working on inter internet, global, let's say global work um, in theater. And it was a great conversation because we really had the opportunity to hear from you know, what people are working on, what things they'd like to work on. Um, one of the things that was requested out of that meeting is that there be some kind of um, website or place where people could put their work, map it out, get to know who's doing what. Um, thanks to our friends at HowlRound, that website now exists. Um, and you can go there, we have information about it. Um, the World Theater Map. It's called mm -hmm. World Theater Map. Um, and you can you know, create a 
a profile. Um, you can list shows that you're doing. Um, you can help other people get on there. I think they're gradually translating, so it's available in Spanish. It's, in, I think the next language may be French, um, but they're, they're trying to create translation. So that's something that's actually happened in the last four <laughs> years. Okay. Um, we then did, in Washington, D.C., and in Portland last year, pre-conferences. Um, in D.C., we had 25 countries represented, um, and it was a really fantastic day. We really focused in on um, subject matter around refugees, and we followed that um, in Portland with also a very well-attended pre-conference. Um, we couldn't do it this year just because it takes a lot of resources to be able to do it. We thought this year, let's you know just have some programming um, such as this, uh, but we look forward to being able to convene again on, on a larger scale. Um, so that's some of the work that we've done jointly so far. Um, we celebrate World Theater Day in a pretty large fashion every year. Um, we are facilitating a lot of different exchanges. Um, there's a lot of uh, activity happening with young people and with um, high school and especially college and university students. Um, there's interest in translation. Um, we're also trying to get to a place of really thinking about what unites us as theater makers around the world because we are so connected to each other in terms of why we do the work. Um, and we also are living in a time where um, the U.S. Is, is so not well represented around the world and where a lot of very long time alliances are being broken. Um, so we feel like theater people have such an important role to play right now. Um, so I like to think about things like, what do we have in common around um, our concerns around human rights? What do we have in common around our, our concerns about audience? All, there are all these things, you know, even funding and, and keeping keeping the theaters alive. How can we help uh, communities around the world that don't have theater spaces to get them? You know, there's a lot that we can work on together that really matters to us and matters to others. Um, so, that's what I got. Yeah, just to, uh, some of you were in the University Affiliates uh, space yesterday, and I think there's, there is a, a relatively new network for higher education in the performing arts that's a global network that's part of ITI, uh, International Theater Institute, which uh, will, ha will announce a next World Congress soon. Um, they tend to be about every two years, and the last one was in Segovia, Spain. But what's one of the th most exciting developments out of the ITI space, I think, uh, at the last Congress has been that it's just getting younger and more vibrant and really more cross-generational in very, very exciting ways. There's Amelia has worked for years developing the kind of young practitioners uh, wing of it, and with this new network, there was just a sense, and it's very, you know, now as I sit on the ITI board, there's a really felt shared sense that ITI is uh, a much more future-oriented feeling space, and that there's a real, pro not just a cross-cultural, but a cross-generational exchange happening there. And I think there's, I mean, there's so many um, uh, intersections and synergies, but one that we've been just, like, that seems, there's a lot of discussion about, of course, how university spaces and the professional theater spaces can continue to build those those relationships and integration of practice and training and exploring models for sharing. And I think there are ways, um, it was just, there's energy out of the university affiliate space for thinking about how um, folks who share an interest in international work, there isn't really a particular network <laughs> for that, but whether formally or informally, to build or strengthen some of those relationships so that we can share uh, ideas and practices. I think it's happening informally, but that's it. Um, should we, it's a big room, should we try to quickly go around and uh, end the introductions? Yeah, Let's that would be great. So, uh, great. So if you could sh share um, just uh, who you are, uh, what brings you into the space, the work you're doing, and if there's something just so that, because one could use most of the time in those <laughs> introductions. Um, so keep it brief, but I think if there's something that you're really, like that feels, uh, intentional in terms of like a hope or an idea or something, uh, you know, almost like an agenda item that you want to put out there briefly, that would be great, whether we can get to all of them, but just so that we can take stock of that. Try at this stage not to um, 
share you know a, a long anecdote about because we just <laughs> won't get uh, we won't get uh, all the way ac around the room. Um, so Aaron, you want to start? Sure. <coughs> I'm Aaron Jeferis. I'm a hip hop playwright, and I'm interested in how um, uh, audience creation of art at a performance um, uh, can further the, the uh, um, goals of, of, uh, of empathy and understanding that, that I was looking at in, in your um, brochure. Great. I know you work internationally. <coughs> uh, yeah. I mean, occasionally <laughs> um, when, uh, yeah, but um, more just when I have a show that's, that's, that's good out there. Yeah, that's really good. Great. Great. My name is Virginia Ogden. I'm a Bull Fellow at Northern Stage in White River Junction, Vermont. And uh, through our education program, I'm interested in how we can get our students to share their work uh, across borders. Uh, Abby Marcus is the Managing Director for CalArts Center for New Performance, um, where uh, we produce work um, both on the global stage this past season in the Wujen Festival in China, um, in France and Brussels, in Cuba, as well as in New York and Los Angeles. Um, we also provide residency space for artists uh, to germinate work with us on campus with our students um, and we have served artists uh, internationally right now from Poland um, and uh, Mexico and parts of South America um, and so we are very interested in how we bring our work out into the world and then what by bringing our work out into the world and collaborating internationally what that, that the relationship is for our students and their study. Let's go this way. Yeah. Laurie. Um, Laurie McCants, Bloomsburg Theatre Ensemble. We are a, a theatre company in a, in a small town in rural Pennsylvania. We've done international collaborations with artists from Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, uh, Japan, Egypt, and we have an ongoing training in uh, Japanese no theater, and a theater company has been born out of our company called Nogaku, Theater Nogaku, which is creating new no plays in English. And I think my, my interest is uh, maintaining the relationship with our local university. Dan Rothenberg, Artistic Director of Pig Iron Theater in Philadelphia, lots of international collaborations and P3 visas. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, less so since the founders have more kids and aren't able to go abroad as much. Uh, I actually came because we have an exchange that's been informal with Teatr Slava outside Stockholm for almost 20 years now. Their training has become part of our training and they've been doing a kind of a social practice they wouldn't call it that, a pageant with Iraqi and Afghan refugees uh, outside Stockholm for two or three years. And I guess I'm just kind of <coughs> always wondered about, A, that they would love to turn their training into a book, or, and I'm wondering if there's an American <coughs> university that would host them, or finding a partner for that. And uh, also wondering about, we've sent some of our graduate students over there who have always been like, yay, about, about yeah. being there for their intensive with the, the refugee population and just wondering more about helping them find a American partner, American bridge. Say the name of it. Teater Slava. Okay. Like theater without an H and then uh, Slava. Slava. Okay, got it. Great. I'm Kelsey. I'm Kelsey Learby. I'm Associate Artistic Director for Water Tower Theater in um, Addison, which is north of Dallas, Texas. And um, although our work has not typically uh, branched outside of Texas, um, we have hosted a number of artists in various festivals that we've curated. Um, whose work has branched outside of the United States, and um, and I'm interested in how we can get our local Dallas artists and get their work um, outside of our city and outside of the country, um, and further expand their reach and how that relates to the work that we're doing. I'm Diane Englert. I'm based in Portland, Oregon. I'm a director, producer, and writer. I'm the newbie in the room. I'm interested in doing some work and, and internationally. Collaboration. Great. I'm Luann Haggerty, and I work at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. What's a technology <laughs> college doing at an arts conference? <laughs> we also have a, an arm that's the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, and it sort of organically grew by a touring company called Danger Signs, which is deaf and hearing on stage together. RIT has sister campuses in Dubai and. 
in school Japan and all other places. So I do think that there is potential for dangerous signs to bridge out and to help show that dangerous place, the dangerous signs between cultures, between deaf and hearing, between wherever we're going and wherever we've been. Um, hi, my name is Sophie. Uh, my name is Stefan Ams and them. Uh, I work for HowlRound. Um, so I'm here because uh, one, local citizenship is in our uh, values and our mission, um, but also because um, I did my master's program abroad and I have often thought about um, how to sustain the collaborations I have internationally, which are some of the mm -hmm. longest term internet, um, collaborations, um, specifically what those look like when you're not connected to an institution anymore and when your work uh, revolves around community organizing and uh, the intersection of arts and social justice. Hi, I'm Sharon Fogarty. I'm one of the artistic directors of Mabu Minds in New York City. Uh, we're going to the Wuhan Festival in China mm. in um, <laughs> October. <laughs> yes. And you know, my question is, it's really hard when there's only one source of funding in the U.S. to you know, go to a festival. And also, to be able to host artists, there's pretty much nothing. Mm. Yeah. So what can we do about that? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's this one source of funding? Yeah. That you're U.S. <laughs> Arts International for Mid-Atlantic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. My name is Megan Jones. I'm also with Pigeon Theater Company. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, we have several international students with our master's degree program at Cuba partnership with you, you Arts in Philadelphia. Um, but I'm really just here to listen and learn. <laughs> I'm Janet Stanford. I'm the Artistic Director at Imagination Stage in Bethesda, Maryland, and we are a TYA theater. I've been doing international collaboration for 20 odd years, um, and um, very uh, my aesthetic as a theater is very much more from what I've seen in Europe as opposed to what I've learned in the States. And recently, we've been trying to have artists from overseas interact with our students. Um, just last week, we, we had a group of teenagers in Italy doing a dance performance with kids from all over the rest of the world. Um, and last summer, we took a, a, we were the first ever American performance at the 25th anniversary of the Seoul Assetage International. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to what you were saying about the absolute absence of money that allows us to go overseas as artists <coughs> and show our work mm -hmm. in a time when diplomacy, cultural diplomacy, mm -hmm. should be on the top of somebody's agenda. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Dinkova, and I am a Bulgarian theater director and adapter and creator. And I have, so I currently work at the Alliance Theater where I have a post-graduate school fellowship. And ever since I've, er, I arrived in the States, which was eight years ago, and you know, I'm an immigrant and proudly and happily so, yeah. um, I have found it particularly difficult to convince American theaters and artistic directors that it is worthwhile to actually look to other cultures and other countries okay. with complex histories in order to get more perspective <coughs> on what is currently happening in America, because what's happening here, even though definitely having its cultural idiosyncrasies is not unique in any shape or form. And I think there's a lot of potential in exploring these cultural collaborations and communications in order to figure out how to solve or improve the current situation. But it makes me very happy to see that there's a room of people who are interested mm -hmm. in that. So I'm here because I'm curious as an international person in America, how I can serve as a mediator or facilitator for some of those cross-cultural collaborations. Let's move right around that yeah. way. Hi, I'm, I'm Patrick Seiler. I'm with Upstream Theater here in St. Louis. We are a small but mighty SPT theater <laughs> that concentrates on international and global work. We've done over 30 uh, U.S. premieres here in town. Um, we choose our material uh, to have local residents, even though uh, it's uh, of international, so just kind of step, uh, uh, stepping up from what you're talking about. We, we do that stuff. Um, and uh, I guess I'm just here, my, our uh, artistic director couldn't make it here, so I'm just here to gather as much information as possible and, uh, yeah, just check it out. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm uh, Christian Parker. I'm the chair of the graduate theater program at Columbia University School of the Arts. Um, and um, <clears throat> I think as we, uh, as our program has evolved and we've somewhat de-siloed it, one of the things that we have been attempting to do is in, in, um, in line with our mission really to, you know, not only educate but plug our students into the profession to the best of our ability is to do so increasingly with a global perspective and we've begun to initiate certain and cultivate certain partnerships with international institutions, both schools and peer schools in, in other countries, notably in China, um, and also with, uh, with theater producing institutions so that our students are, are, can conceive of doing internships abroad or um, apprenticeships abroad, which we also require for them. Um, in my own practice, I'm a director of dramaturg, so I've also worked some internationally in that capacity, so I have a personal interest in it as well. And um, but I'm most interested in how, um, from my, you know, my full-time job, how I can um, forge more of these relationships internationally with ins with other institutions, with also without resources. It's not like Columbia University is just paying for this either. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, and I've no, and it's <coughs> certainly clear that. In dealing with China, for example, that they have resources to bring to the table very often that, that helps to facilitate this stuff, but not every place does. We have another partnership in Croatia, for example, that mm -hmm. you know we have we struggle to fund, yeah. and they do too. So anyway, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marissa Ford. I'm the Associate General Manager at Goodman Theater. Um, we've had some international collaborations, so I'm looking at how we can expand those um, how we can make the most of time when we do bring in an international theater group and how we can give them more visibility rather than our local area um, how we expand to regional and national levels and and collaborate with other theaters to um, make it more uh, make it more of an experience for them as well as um, um, developing uh, the the message that they're trying to send as well and also how we can create more opportunities for professional development um, across the fields Hi, my name is Morgan. Um, I work in casting at the Guthrie in Minnesota. Um, I'm just personally interested in a different part of my industry since our theater is extremely regional and mm -hmm. it doesn't do a lot of um, uh, work internationally. Um, and maybe from a Guthrie perspective, interested in uh, where things are uh, with translation. I know that Guthrie is interested in expanding where what is our idea of the classics, um, though that work hasn't happened yet, so just hearing about it would be fun to bring back. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Jackson. I'm a company member at Shotgun Players in uh, Berkeley, but also a theater maker based in San Francisco, and the experiences I've had both as an artist and an audience in uh, theaters in other countries have been among the most galvanizing for me. And so a rolling question that I have constantly have and why I'm here is how can we adapt practices and systems that are working in other countries to ours? Mm -hmm. And I find that that is, question is met with a lot of, well, we can't bother worrying about them because yeah. they have subsidies and we don't. And <laughs> I, I've come to believe that that's just an excuse to not actually deal with the world. So yeah. <laughs> I don't believe in that s statement. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're an educator, right, also? Yes, and I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Julie Hendren. I'm with Trick Lock Company based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I'm the director of Global Corridor, which is our ongoing sort of collaborative um, programming. And um, we produce artists and, and do international collaborations throughout the year. We have three ongoing collaborations right now, one in Uganda, one in Colombia, and one in Poland. And um, then the flagship sort of project of the Global Corridor is the Revolutions International Theater Festival which uh, is coming up on its 20th year and um, is for three weeks in March. We produce artists from all over the world, performances, workshops, panels, and um, every other year we do a Theater Without Borders Revolution Symposium. And I'm here because I like to connect with other people who are doing <laughs> international work, especially looking at resources. Um, we're really isolated in New Mexico. Um, and so it's like, you know, I, I produce a lot of artists and sometimes the only thing they do is come to Albuquerque and then go home because I can't find anywhere else to produce them. So it'd be great to have a network of, of other producers and collaborators. Hi, I'm Deb Vandergrift. I'm the general manager at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. We're a producing company that periodically shares our work abroad. We also have 
parallel to our subscription series, a world stage series, where we bring in five or six productions each year from all over the globe. And I'm here just to learn more about the TCG initiative. I'm Michelle Preston. I'm the executive director of City Company. We're a 25-year-old ensemble theater based in New York City. We tour domestically and internationally. We teach the Suzuki and Viewpoints method of actor training, and we um, teach those workshops not only in New York City, but we teach them domestically and internationally as well. And then we have a biennial nine-month conservatory program, um, and oftentimes at least half of the classes are international <coughs> students, and so we get to deal with um, J-1 visas. <laughs> so anything about visas and touring internationally is, is what I'm interested in. I'm Beth Lewis. I'm the managing director of Bag and Baggage Productions outside of Portland, Oregon. Um, and I'm here because we just opened a 160-seat studio theater, and I'm hungry for international work, and hearing you in New Mexico, I want your tours to come up to Portland. Okay. So <laughs> uh, that's why I'm here is to, to build that um, relationship with all of you to, to get some, because we have a hungry audience. Hi, my name is Jessica Lewis, and I work with a TCG with Teresa and Kevin Bitterman and Amelia Cacciaparo. I work on the Global Connections program, which is a program that supports reciprocal theatrical exchanges between U.S. theater professionals and companies and our counterparts abroad. And um, we support uh, collaborations at the very beginning of the relationship through to um, the research and development process uh, for a new theater work. And um, I'm just excited to be here and hear about the work that y'all are doing. And um, you know, also happy to answer questions about that program. Hi, I'm Irina Krujil, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm late. I'm here, first of all, because I'm a very great admirer of, of Global Connections and Derek's and Jojo's lab. They're, they're phenomenal. I don't think that there's anybody else in the world who does that. I'm, I'm an individual artist. I'm an international artist, just like I lo love your country. Have, have <laughs> <laughs> Many times I, I work all around the world as a designer and visual dramaturg. I think one of the things which I'm trying to do, I teach things which are not taught in this country. Um, in terms of visuals and design, it's one of the things which I'm trying to, to give the American theater. And I'm trying to be that mediator to bring some uh, people and the challenge which I faced, I, I was able to, to um, I'm connected greatly to, to a wonderful director, uh, Dmitry Primov. And what happened when he came here, many, it feels like many theaters want him and they try to apply for the same grant yeah. <laughs> to bring him. So you see this, that there is only one fund and then there are a few companies who really want to bring him in but they're applying for the same grant, competing with one another, mm -hmm. and it feels very uh, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's uh, other ways to, mm -hmm. to sponsor amazing, amazing artists because there's so much we can learn from them. Mm. My name is Jessica Prudencio. I am with Ping Chong and Company. I'm also a freelance director. I'm based in New York and San Diego. I just got back from the Julie Taymor World Theater Fellowship, <laughs> the first recipient of that, where I lived in Thailand, Japan, and the Philippines, and created two projects with my company, People of Interest, which is issue-based, uh, and it's on, it on people and issues, and interview-based, uh, as opposed to the form, even though I study that form. But we created projects, one in Thailand on prostitution, and one in the Philippines on the war on drugs. Uh, so I am now an international artist. I feel like it's essential to my work, and it's now my process, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to learn more about the field and how I can continue this work and bring the work that I created here to the U.S. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go back to the mm -hmm. corner. Oh, hi, I'm Erin um I'm with TCG, and uh, I'm mostly here to listen and learn today, but uh, I also work in the TCG books department, so a lot of my thinking is um, publication and book-based, so I'm mm -hmm. particularly interested in um, availability and access to works in translation, because um, I think the American theater is very American theater <laughs> focused <laughs> when it comes to uh, publishing and reading. So. Uh, my name is Renata James, I'm the education coordinator at Aurora Theater. 
Um, and we do work with international artists, not my department specifically, but our theater does bring in artists uh, to work in our teatro series, which is all Spanish speaking. Um, but personally, I'm just really excited to hear and learn and absorb uh, because I don't know much. <laughs> and so I'm excited to learn a little bit more. Could you say your name again? Mm -hmm. Renita. Renita. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Renelle Bedell. I'm the Assistant Managing Director at Zach Theater in Austin, Texas, and very similar to you. Um, just here to learn. We don't do really any work globally, so here to learn what others are doing and what what we can do in this area. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm John Flax, uh, founding artistic director of Theater Grotesco in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, we started as an international company in France, and um, our collaborations were all international. Uh, we've done some projects in Colombia, and we're doing a project in Spain. Uh, and it's interestingly enough that it's the international projects that are the most interesting to me. Uh, we, we we're talking with a Belgian company. Uh, there's a Mexican project that's coming. And I'm most interested in, uh, the, yeah, that insistence on some more funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that's <laughs> 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 Kevin and then the background. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin Bitterman, uh, Director of Institutional Advancement and Partnerships at TCG. Um, I've been in this role for about a year. Prior to that, I was the uh, Assistant Director of Artistic and International Programs, so really working with all my colleagues here on our international programming. Um, uh, in my new role, one of the many things I'm looking at is that funding question. Yeah. <laughs> um, both to renew our support, which is really from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and other sources. Um, I don't know if Derek mentioned this at the top, but another significant amount of our um, kind of joint programming that we've been doing together is delegations to various festivals around the world. Mm -hmm. Several of you have traveled with us, we've traveled with you. Um, and those delegations of attending festivals have been transformative because they've led to collaborations, mm -hmm. to co-productions, co-people doing tours when they bring a company to the U.S., cost sharing. Um, so I think some of the, uh, I'm hoping one of the outcomes out of this room is just more of the how can this community group work together to share the resources to support and bring artists. Um, I know Trick Black's doing amazing work in that area too, mm -hmm. so um, great to be back in this room. I'm Jojo Rupp, I'm the Managing Director of the Lab, um, and uh, alongside Kevin um, was uh, one of the producers for our global pre-conference the past several years. I've been in delegations with TCG and co-led them, um, and then also served on the panel for Global Connections grant for TCG as well, um, and have been working in the international space since the lab was founded about seven years ago, um, and like many in this room are excited about having conversations about um, the funding world and how we can sort of leverage our resources. Um, and I'm just really delighted to see how full this room is. So excited for the conversation. Hi, I'm Pia Haddad. Um, I started my production company called 332 Productions, um, which mission is to create new work by multicultural artists. I'm from Lebanon, but I've, you know, I was born here, I lived in Europe. So um, I'm interested in using my internationality to create international collaborations, because I believe like it's important to create like one voice, one global voice, new work, common humanity. So I'm, but I'm here to learn as well because although I am from all these places, I'm not sure how to connect them really. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. My name is Ali. My name is Ali Ali Mahdi. I am from uh, Sudan. I'm founder and artistic director of a Buga Theater Company. It's a private sector theater. We work for the last 30 years. Uh, we have a lot of projects especially in the field of humanitarian work with the orphan children and in the peace dialogue in Sudan, you know, and our neighbor. We have the festival for the last 19 years. We have a good cooperation with TCG for the last 10, 12 years, maybe. Yeah. We're inviting groups from here, from USA, to have performers leading workshop like the last workshop with Teresa and we are with the support of TCG I have my first performance in USA at La Mama Theater mm -hmm. that was very interesting as a chain because mm -hmm. uh, they call it uh, out of Broadway my performance is out 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is what <laughs> This is what Peter Prook, you know Peter Prook, I yep. met him many times in Paris, he's a friend of mine. And I, I gave him the CD and he said, 
you changing the whole place of La Mama mm -hmm. because we make a circle for the like yesterday, you see. So I, I cooperate very much with uh, Georgetown University. I came many times for workshop, leading workshop, working with the, with the, uh, with the students. Uh, I, I am interested very much in the international cooperation. This is the only way mm -hmm. for develop and support the young artists, especially in countries like our countries. We have a good cooperation with the German, we send about 11 people to Stuttgart for a long. Uh, I'm leading in our our, our uh, regional a new initiative for using the performance in the difficulties, in the peace buildings. I believe very much in the cooperation, the international cooperation with, with the other. I'm coming here especially. This is one of my important moments that I attend this workshop because we can exchange information but unfortunately when we leave we forget the emails which mm -hmm. is very big problem <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to, to make more performance of my group around the world eh? and to welcome more performance from around the world in Sudan with the difficulty of the Sudan the two gentlemen are in Sudan and they know the two uh, the, uh, the Excellency and Teresa they are in Sudan they know how it is hot <laughs> and our festival is very simple festival, very poor one, but it's very rich with the people. You can manage to meet all the people. So I'm sorry to talk too much, but I'm, I'm <laughs> so happy that I make it to attend this session, especially this session. Thank, Thank you. My name is Teddy Roger. I'm the Communications and Global Connectivity Manager at the lab with Derek and Jojo. And I'm thinking all about all the ways we work, but specifically I'm looking to strengthen and deepen the way we support our lab fellows, who are 10 really innovative um, emerging artists around the world um, working at this sort of intersection of politics and performance. So I'll be thinking of them and bringing them into the room. I'm Courtney O'Neill, I'm with the Alliance Theater, and I, I'm really just here to listen and learn. Can we get everyone? So, ah, Kathy. Hi, um, I'm Kathy. I consider myself international because I, I was born and raised and worked in international presenting in Shanghai, China before coming to the States for grad school. Um, and aside from that, I'm here to learn. Great. That's a very full trip around an amazing room. Um, it's just a practical question. Are we, I, would, I, would, I just want to make sure that we have some mechanism, because I don't know what the app is doing, that we're actually capturing everybody who's in the room so we can stay in contact. Can we, should we pass around a... I thought about that, but then I realized that I don't have a big enough pad. <laughs> um, but I have been noting who's here. I if we noted could borrow it. Your pad, that would be great. Yes, I, I just think something's, I mean, that's a, because yeah, clearly there's it. such a, um, uh, you know, we're not going to get to everything, but there is something about just the very fact of mm -hmm. uh, the power of the fact of mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, a, a session with this title mm -hmm. fills this room that I think is actually really directly connected to some of the kind of like, uh, appetites in the room for like making a case and for why isn't there funding and, and for the kind of networking that we're trying to build and so we need I think when this happens to, to not just kind of anecdotally say it was a very full room and there's a lot of people doing this work but to really be thinking intentionally and I think this is a big part of what we've been talking about with GTI about how we're you know we're building a, a networked community that can advocate on its own behalf and can tell the stories of like what's already happening mm -hmm. and thus you know make the case uh, in, uh, in our various orbits for resources partnerships um, uh, for foundations and others to be aware that when you put a you know when you put this on the calendar on the calendar at a TCG conference in St. Louis that the room fills up like this okay. yeah that's great Thank you. Thank you. that's great we've got one up here maybe you start that way too yeah, maybe we'll get two, two going. That might actually be good. Yeah. If you have a business card, I would rather just leave that. That's a great way to keep like transcribing. So, but, yeah. but yeah, that works too. So give it. But don't be shy about doing yeah. both, just to make sure we get everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, We're going to have <laughs> multiple <laughs> rounds in the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it seems uh, that, you know, I kind of noted a couple things that are really rising to the top. 
um, in listening to what people are thinking about. One on the practical level has to do with funding and shared resources, and this comes up all the time because really, actually, there is very little funding for international work. And um, there have been a number of studies. Uh, one, uh, Bank of America, U.S. Trust, does a study of high net worth philanthropic people every other year, and you know, if you look at the priorities for giving, global causes are down towards the bottom. If you think about talking with colleagues in the theater field sometimes about the importance of international work, people, at least in the past, are like, why, you know? Um, so we are fighting a bit against like the challenge of there not already being this giant amount of support and uh -huh. desire to support the work. But I think we can do it. I mean, I think if we talk a little bit about what those avenues might be and then get a few folks like Kevin Berman <laughs> in your copious spare time um, to really start to, to put together, like, these are actually the sources, but how else can we collectively raise some funds? Um, so just the funding piece. And then the other is I think if we have time to talk about something more on the values and philosophical side around what our role is right now at this point moment in time mm -hmm. in having an impact in yeah. the world and fighting against what is um, really so destructive in our country and in our world right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, Just a suggestion, um, look at your local corporations, um, local businesses. Um, we receive funding for our, our Japanese exchange from a company that's in a very small town in rural Pennsylvania that happens to be Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're very supportive and they're executives take our theater classes, et cetera. And I would add to that, sister cities. Uh -huh. You often don't know <laughs> that you're, where you are is a sister city to somewhere uh, else in the world. <coughs> and there is not always arts funding to go with that, but it's certainly worth suggesting it. You know, how do you, if like Rockville turns out to be a sister city with Xi'an, China, but nobody knows that. Oh. So there, th there's a reason for that, and it's a, commer it's a business reason. But if you could get, if I can get Rockville to recognize that putting up a show and sh saying we're doing this because we're a sister city, uh, it helps. It helps the partnership. Um. I would add um, trust for mutual understanding, mm -hmm. while yeah. geographically specific, um, is also a, the other <laughs> foundation funding. Yeah, I will yeah. say that, that my frustration yeah. uh, this year, at least, yeah. is that um, we end up doing a lot of collaborations with Eastern Europe. China, um, which is also a draw for a lot of our students who come from China, um, it was harder to do because the, the, the funding just isn't there. Ditto with uh, South America, where we have a, a large uh, Latinx pro program, um, and so we have a great interest in getting there and funding the business there for those countries of it. Yeah, and where economic, um, uh, the ec economics of those countries are very volatile yes. and change very quickly. Yeah. And is the Asian Cultural Council also, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily fund tours and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But artists who you know, bring artists, artists here. Asia, mm -hmm. yeah. So a number of people mentioned connected to universities. Do you find the funding comes with the university for this kind of? <laughs> no, <laughs> the perception that it should, but actually, yeah, you know, but awesome. in general within, and it sounds like similar at Columbia, like yeah. these are fledgling you know, remapping initiatives within institutions are like, oh, <coughs> cool, go for it. But in terms yeah. of actually generating yeah. it as a core thing with funding, is there's a lot of obstacles to that. Even in terms of like getting access to prospective donor, is sometimes even more of an obstacle to be at right. the university because you're not eligible for some of the kinds of funding. We get a lot of, um, I mean, Columbia has, um, <laughs> in the past 10 years, opened all over the world, a series of what they call global centers, which are basically they're not they're not new buildings. They're just sort of they're found spaces with point people placed in in these countries that range from Brazil to Jordan to India, all over the place. There's one at a global center at Reed Hall in Paris for all of Europe, um, and we get a lot of uh, sort of I would pressure might be the wrong word, but we're encouragement to exploit these global centers for faculty to go to different global centers and 
present or do a workshop or um, initiate contact locally in these places with no resources to do so. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if people want to spend their own money to go there, they can and they, they'll have a welcome, you know, they'll be welcome in these places. But there's not, it's a strange situation where they, they've, they've made a gesture towards globalism, um, but there's not, yeah. there's nothing that underneath that in terms of support, financial support. Um, certainly we can't just sort of decide to bring a group of students to a place um, or, or even a group of faculty. We also find that there's a lot of, because it's part of a larger university, a lot of competition. Yeah. Like, yes. you know, only one department, mm -hmm. program, oh, yeah. et cetera, you can the advancement department uh, support. Mm -hmm. support at times, though, like for like the NEA. Mm -hmm. We just have to, we have to be prioritized mm -hmm. by the university. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is still some funding at the State Department. Periodically, there are new programs that are announced. There's, I, Center Stage is still being done, I think, through NEPA, correct? Um, and then I'm also finding with some of the consulates that are based in New York um, that they're very interested in promoting their own countries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Sweden, mm -hmm. Spain, um, Catalonia, um, they, and so there is sometimes funding to bring the artists mm -hmm. to the states. And we also have, um, as Derek mentioned, we're often taking, I think you mentioned this, we're often taking, um, or maybe it was Kevin or Jojo, but delegations to other countries for festivals where the festival can cover the cost of your, let's say, hotel and, and your tickets to see the shows, but then you need to be able to get yourself there. So, you know, to the extent right. that people can come up with, you know, some money for a flight, we mm -hmm. can sometimes facilitate getting you to a festival um, just to see the work and then figure out whether the consulate in this country has the money to help you bring artists here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Or the, ho or the home country helps. We just yeah. got a group from Chile based on the delegation mm -hmm. from TCG of going there, mm -hmm. and so we were able to get the government. And through writing letters of invitation, et cetera, we got all their flights covered mm -hmm. and their visas taken care of, and so then we just had to take care of everything on our end. And it was super, it made a huge difference. It was a huge group of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been in South America to see some of the U.S. embassies helping the presenting partners in a specific country bring us more mm -hmm. our and those manage, those relationships are actually not being managed by us as the U.S. company, they're being managed by the international presenters. I always get a little um, utopian in, this, in these inspiring rooms, and then it gets me thinking about whether, I feel like we go around and there's so much genuinely inspiring work and examples of where people are making it happen with limited resources or have done it, and I, I can't help but wonder if somehow we're um, missing an opportunity to make a collective case mm -hmm. better that's self-evident mm -hmm. to us, but that over years of like, you know, I mean, this is the St. Louis, like, that the ripples are actually quite large and that um, example, the perceptions that, oh, it's too expensive, there's not enough impact, you know, that there's so many counter examples that could be perhaps gathered constructively by the kind of folks in this room to sort of put in front, to sort of say there's actually a movement. Yeah. There's not just a series of examples of projects, there's a sort of movement that's been going on that there's evidence in all of these kinds of spaces, the different types of spaces that come into a space like this. And that would take, I'm you know, not underestimating the sort of labor and organization that would take, but I do feel like that's a, there's almost a sense that we're still, there's still like a, 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 a not very well kept secret or something in a room like this. So I don't know how we would just throw that out there. I think the big difference between our country and met most all of the other countries in the world is that we have no government funding for mm -hmm. any of this. And, you know, look, take the case of Ireland, they have the, um, okay, I can't remember the name of it, but they have a strong international funded, artist funded program, and the UK, China, um, even Russia. So uh, it's, I, I think that's, once we are validated in that way that we need to be cultural ambassadors, um, it's important, it's necessary. Uh, you know, then we're just kind of grabbing piecemeal at what little there is out there. 
don't see that changing, I have to say. <laughs> I, well, I think our, yeah. our biggest yeah. hope is starting in this room and yes. TCG and, and Kevin convincing the um, <laughs> <laughs> the international corporations, like multinational no, corporations right. and, the, yeah. and the national funders that there is a social benefit in this kind of cultural exchange, cultural literacy, uh, that, that just, I mean, I, I wish there was just money for Americans of all stripes to yeah. travel to other yes. countries. Yes. 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 You know, because I feel like that, you, I mean, you always hear those stories about, oh, like, I was an exchange student right? in this other place, and then I realized they were people. Yeah. It was amazing. Right. <laughs> well, one thing that we're starting to do, because, you know, we're a tiny theater in the middle of Vermont, and we have no funding for something like this, is we're starting to really utilize technology mm -hmm. um, for, <clears throat> you know, even if we can't get there or we can't bring them there, and it's been it's been a it's been pioneered by our students too. People in middle uh, our students in middle school who are like getting on Google Translate or getting on Skype or getting in chat rooms and finding other students around the world that they want to collaborate with. So that's one way that we've kind of put our foot in the door with very little money or resources to start those collaborations. I was just going to make two quick things. One, um, just a funding stream that hasn't been mentioned is through the State Department, and often this is embassies in other countries. So like the Pakistani embassy will you know, you can apply for a grant. And sometimes it's like $100,000. It's like pretty significant. They're, it's very laborious. It's a it's a pretty hard grant. So like forewarned, it's like NEA on steroids. But, um, <laughs> uh, but there is some funding that depending on sort of what countries you're looking at might be interesting. And then the other conversation that I think is paired with this is the conversation of visas, which I know has been brought up already. And I know Janet and Julie, I I've talked to both of them and I know a lot of you have dealt with this, that it's just, it's harder and harder and harder to get right visas now. to get artists to come here. We've had, you know, productions planned and then their visas were denied. Mm -hmm. Some for realistic grounds, like reasonable grounds, some for completely unreasonable grounds. Artists are being held at the border for hours and hours and missing connections. So it's also, I think the idea of partnering also helps leverage the, the power um, to get artists here too and then also and Kevin and I have sort of worked on this a lot in, glo in the global pre-conference of hiring lawyers to really work on your behalf, and that mm -hmm. obviously is extremely costly, but when you can pool resources to do that, that's also really helpful. I had a, just a thought, too, that I think there's a series of larger conversations that a, you know, a group formally or informally like this can begin to have with the larger group of um, certainly PCG member theaters and the, the theater community at large about barriers to uh, self-imposed barriers to interest in this kind of work yeah. which you know uh, you know if we can you know make a sweeping generalization about the American theater still being largely playwright centric like where can we employ without trying to change that yeah. necessarily not that we might not want to change that mm -hmm. to some extent but like without with the by acknowledging that how do we then appeal to the playwrights in our community who have a lot of sway to take an interest in, in working on adaptations and translations of international work, right? Like, that not only do we want to have intersections of people traveling from place to place or bringing in tours or sending out tours, but we also have a, a, a text-centric, playwright-centric theater in this country where we don't have a lot of our writers intersecting with international playwrights. And how can we facilitate that conversation so that I think artistic directors who perceive, you know, in, in our resident theaters, institutional theaters, who perceive a barrier to presenting international work around their usual fears of what audiences will accept, m you might, l we may lower that barrier a bit if we can get American playwrights working on inter translations and adaptations of international yeah. plays. I um, also find that in my work in, you, you know, U.S. regional theaters that many are slow to re sort of realize all the ways that I think are self-evident to a lot that the global is the local. Yeah. That by connecting globally, you, you know, you're actually reaching out into your own community, yeah. the diversity of your own communities, the immigrant community, and there's sort of like a, just, there's some, I think, in some cases, some obvious opportunities that by mm -hmm. sort of assumptions about what it means to think globally yeah. are, don't, are, can happen in, in very immediate and local mm -hmm. ways. And I think one other way to circumvent that, which is implied in what you're saying, is not only to get American playwrights to be interested in international transla play translations and collaborations, but also to get international playwrights in 
working on things about America, mm -hmm. which I'm sure will be very uh, illuminating and informative perspectives. And many people are already doing it. It's just a matter of reaching out to those people and then showing American artistic directors that these plays in fact exist <coughs> and might be interesting to these local communities. Mm -hmm. Can we, like really, you know, you're talking about like producing theaters and how do you convince them to do international work? Like Europe has the, the No Boundary series, which is international presenting work, which actually I ran last year. Um, and it's like it's totally different. Like it's a it's marketed to a complete different different audience. Like we don't even even pull less from our subscribers to send our e blast to because we know like the uh, the audience would be different. And so like it's not necessarily competing with um, with whatever resources out there that that is dedicated to like new plays or whatever like tech centric um, productions. I think it's more about like expanding the territory so that there's more entryway for peop for other people who may be inspired, including the artists already in the field, by seeing these very different kind of work and also people who has never been to who who feel a little bit, you know, disconnected with the um, traditional American theater that find some find some international work that is maybe more um, I don't know, transformative in forms or ex explorative in that way and then maybe, you know, starting to, you know, bring them in and whatever that is. I wonder if there are, it doesn't chime in, Teresa, if you, but just thinking of how to, like, what are the opportunities to build a stronger sense of community out of, <laughs> it feels like it's, it's quite remarkable to me who, you know, who comes into these spaces consistently, and I think there's lots of us who know lots of us, but how, as we think about GTI and these kind of, and other sort of network, as things that are set up particularly to work on relationship building and network building and kind of knowledge sharing, how when we talk about the web, you know, web-based stuff, we have an annual conference, but I'm, if there are kind of concrete thoughts on how to, <laughs> um, you know, how to build on what happens in this space in the, in, 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 you know, bef before we gather again in a year um, and create momentum out of that, I think we'd welcome that really interesting to me at least um, we don't do presenting work as much as we do producing um, but uh, but that doesn't mean we were able to collaborate with the Skirball Center this year who we were bringing uh, La Verte House to Rada Sal Sol to be presented and then we tagged on a residency for them um, so we were able to collaborate on the visa it's but part of that is just knowing that they were going to be doing the LALA yeah. festival, Do you know. And so, like, part of that is like the consortium building of, well, yes, we can get consortium funding, we can go after mm -hmm. you know consortium based visa applications. Part of that is just knowing kind of who's and and that's so f and it's so far out in the knowledge, but like it would really help us in terms of supporting international artists and residencies to know who is going to be in the states and how we can continue their journey here in a meaningful way. Would it be too much for us, I mean, this is just too much for us to create a list or? Yeah. A list or, or, or like some sort of mapping or yeah. 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 Something. Yeah. message yeah. Yeah. or something? Yeah. 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 Something really simple yeah. because then, I mean, we, we know a lot, we get, TCG helps, do, we do consultation letters for visas and we know a fair amount about who's working on what. Um, but, you know, if people just could have a really easy way that you could just like throw out information. We just booked this company to come. Mm -hmm. Anybody else interested? Mm -hmm. um, it can end up with your your mailbox getting pretty full. And there's other ways, like we could set up a Facebook group or other yeah. things. Just finding what's the easiest, simplest, best way. Because right now we are so reliant on the artist. We met an artist when we were in Chile at the festival um, that wants to come and, and start a new work at CalArts. Um, but part of that process is you know, we have found out for what her tour schedule is mm -hmm. in, in the States and being able to tag on to that. And like, I would rather take the onus off the artist so we can be a little bit more proactive yeah. in how we can serve them. Mm -hmm. I'd be really worth mm -hmm. that. But I think your question is so right on, Derek. I mean, we have this energy, we have this, this group. I mean, there may be some folks here who leave and say, that was interesting, um, maybe I'll get involved. But I know there are a lot of people sitting in this room who would like us to be more coordinated more consistently, uh -huh. um, and also I keep thinking this idea of impact and how we start to message 
what we do, you know, it's almost a marketing campaign in a way, or a mm -hmm. awareness campaign that, that just, we claim the space and just do it, because mm -hmm. it's true. We're not gonna ever yeah. probably see a U.S. government that's gonna yeah. say, we do diplomacy through culture. Right, right. <laughs> 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 no, no. So Sorry, I have to do it, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sad situation. I want to share with you our uh, experience, what happened during, because I think that the aim subject is how to develop this relation for international cooperation. Yes, I'm right. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, we work with TCG. TCG introduced us to the Georgetown University and to New York City University also. I, I do some workshop in there. So this is how the things start. You, you deal with uh, one body like TCG, and TCG introduced us to the Theater Without Border, uh, w one of the founders, and uh, our first performance in USA. You can imagine how far I am coming away from. To came here, I take for me 24 hours, one flight, uh, you know. So it's sometimes the people look at difficulties, financial also, uh, because when we came, we covered all our costs, definitely. But you can imagine an organization and company and office find a place for you to make the performance. This is, this is very special. And the other things you talk about the visa. The visa is always difficulties for not only here, for you also. It's really very, very complicated. At the beginning, I don't know, the, p the political people, what they, they said, okay, let the artists go. And suddenly, when we planned to come into another performance in, in DC, they said, no, you are going for commercial work. You have to make another issue, another visa. They call it SB something, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to make sure that you are paying the taxation, yeah. mm -hmm. which is good. This is the new system. No, nobody against that. But the places we are working with, they are not commercial. The performance for Georgetown University is not commercial. It's for people to know the cultural exchange. This is the aim of that for the student, for the community. But it's still, this is one of these issues. At the beginning, we solved it with TCG because at that time, nobody think about people coming from Africa to make performance 10 years ago. So they accept it. So plus talking about fun, let us talk about facilities, political facilities, diplomatic facilities. You can imagine the last two lines. When Teresa was in Khartoum, uh, March 20, 27, yeah? 17, huh? 2017. 2017. In that day, I'm not a politician, but that's what happened. In that day, and the, someone from the embassy announced the same day or before that all the Americans in Sudan, they should not go to any places without somebody taking mm -hmm. care of the problem. Mm -hmm. And that happened. That happened in the, the news. The same day in the morning with her student, they decide to go, this is the first time maybe she know, decide to go a very far place to eat. I myself, for me, it's difficult to go. Uh, so she go, and in Sudan, the driver said, sorry, one of my relatives passed away. So the, he leave him in, in, in that place, in that restaurant, and he said, you can go back to downtown by anything. So they take three uh, transportation until they arrive to the theater. The same time she arrived, she, the, the TV was there. So they speak with her, and she said, I am in that place, uh, the driver, what happened, and we take three transportation, and we arrive here. She didn't say that I'm safe. She didn't say that I'm secure. She didn't say so. But it, it, it gives the meaning. So you see how the political sometimes is doing something the artist can do the, the opposite. The same when we came here, we are safe. And we have a, a good performance with a lot of audience. And this is how to work, not only fun and not only organizing or making network, also to support the politician okay. um, to understand. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was this group of students, there were 52 students in a 
workshop that I did on fundraising. <laughs> yeah. And they decided after, because they had never come together like that before, they decided they were like little mini TCG, so they created a WhatsApp group oh, called, yeah. awesome. called TCG. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about everything, including theater. Um, and I have to put it through Google Translate. But you know, like when the first announcement was made at U.S. Embassy moved to Jerusalem, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, that's another way, a great way to communicate. John, I wanted to. Oh yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think you're right that a marketing campaign is important because I think um, funders and the American public don't realize that the rest of the world does cultural diplomacy. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh -huh. when you go to these festivals. Um, there's almost no U.S. representation. Mm -hmm. It's a one-man show, maybe, because uh, mm -hmm. no one can afford to go there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's really important, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think along those lines, I also want to lift up the comment from earlier about technology and its use in this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. In especially normalizing an interest in performance in other parts of the world. There's already, what is that series called, where the British shows are getting streamed? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So there is that. Uh -huh. And in other countries, for better huh. or for worse, there are different rules for video recording of live performances. So I think there is a huge opportunity in reaching out to theaters, reaching out to artists, and then using your theater as a platform to show that work, even in video format, in order to generate interest. One thing that Skype collaborations. Yeah. One thing that comes to my mind also, just I, I don't really know how we would make a platform for this, but there are an enormous number of international artists who are here uh, after they finish their studies for a year. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. there's not really any kind of clearinghouse for those people to, yeah. to be, not only to make connections here, I mean, you know, uh, so that they can do work in this country, but also so that anybody who is interested in their cultures, in their, mm -hmm. in their countries of origin, in their own work, or who they else they might know back wherever they came from um, can reach those people. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we have a student coming into our program next year, <laughs> assuming she can get her visa from Tehran, and you know that's that's yeah. that's those are the place those are the places where we're, we're still able to have contact mm -hmm. with some of these countries that mm -hmm. um, are so remote from us now, and um, it just seems like there's there, we, there are people in the country already mm -hmm. that we can talk yeah. to. And that's why also I think another little tidbit that might be useful for you to know yeah. and one of the reasons I'm so grateful to have this fellowship with the Alliance Theatre being the second international student who's gotten that fellowship is that these international students for that particular year actually can't receive compensation for working outside of their discipline. So it is a pretty mm -hmm. tricky situation in which you graduate from these elite schools mm -hmm. frequently and then you actually can't make ends meet in any other way than through the theater. So I just want to encourage you all as you're thinking about investing in apprentices, investing in fellows, investing in temporary staff positions to consider that when making decisions. And especially for like directors or designers, right? Um, or actors, because I'm in management, so my situation is different. But for, for other artists who works on gigs, it's, it's, it's even more difficult because mm -hmm. you cannot go mm -hmm not like not the um, the days that you are not working cannot see exceed mm -hmm. 90 days otherwise right. your OPT will be terminated mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's yeah. important to keep mm -hmm. to have a lineup of work so that people can u utilize that even that one year mm -hmm. and to support the visas of course and green cards in any way um, mm -hmm. we can I was in that situation 15 years ago and it was impossible to get a green card that I graduated so whatever we can do to support them, mm -hmm. we're constantly write letters to those people. But mm -hmm. that is more that we can do. And if, sorry. I think especially for young and new and experimental artists as well, like that's the thing we run into. That's predominantly who we produce in the festival. And so, first of all, like the PT pieces are kind of a nightmare because you have to show so many years of you know this extraordinary work and all of this press, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when you're a you know political underground clown in Nicaragua <laughs> or whatever, you, know, you don't have that kind of stuff, and that's what we produce. Uh -huh. So, um, and you know, definitely, I'll just you know, I'm, I'm amongst friends. We've like you know, we've like found our creative ways to bring people in, but we can't do that anymore, actually, and. Um, and it's, it's just really challenging. But what we have found is that, you know, a lot of times, 
especially with young companies that were the first time that we've produced, it's the first time they've toured, it's the first time they've come to the US. It's been really challenging to get the P3, but we've managed to get it through, we brought them here, and then it opens up a million doors for them. Even just, just their hunger to get out and do more, whatever it is, you know, so, so there's, I mean, I, and I'm, I don't think that there is a way to fix the visa process either. Um, and there's no understanding in this country of the artist's visa, like what artists do, it's, it's quite frustrating. But, but again, continuing to sort of help support that around the, around the visa as well, and, and those kinds of artists. And I want to say as well, sorry, just yeah. having talked to a number of immigration lawyers and lawyers who have helped us with visas is that for a really long time, I think people really did get around. So you do like a visitor's visa and they mm -hmm. like present for free yeah. and that's a really great around yeah. it. And now um, artists are going to be penalized if they find that out and will never be let back in the country. Mm -hmm. So just as a... Facebook What's that? And they check Facebook. Exactly. They check yeah. Facebook it, and we had an issue with one of our artists that we brought for a global pre-conference who had done that and so their online was the only record of that they had been part of a previous festival but they didn't apply for the correct visa and it was like we had to basically talk our way out of that um but it really it is becoming more and more dangerous for mm -hmm. to not go, as as challenging and impossible as the actual process is it because it prevents future work mm -hmm. we had a we had a volunteer that's what he was doing he was volunteering we were not paying him anything he was not presenting, there was no tickets, nothing. He was just coming to volunteer for the festival. And um, and they took his phone away, they went all through his stuff, They and they found one email from me where I referred to it as work, because volunteering is work. But it took them a really long time to find it, and they put him back on the plane and sent him back. And he was here on a, he was here on a B2. Um, so, you know, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Um, we're in our final couple minutes. Yeah, I think we need to wrap it up here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just to say, uh, th um, I think one of, to be completely transparent, one of the challenges in making the case, I think, for Global Theater Initiative is, as for like everyone in this room, has been sort of just bandwidth, and you know, like there's there are there's no actual like staff person who is Global Theater Initiative. There's just a lot of people with other jobs who are partnering to do it, and there's no funding underneath Global Theater Initiative. Right, so uh, at this stage, but I think what I'm struck by is there is this kind of, you know, as we've been sort of talking about, this kind of larger uh, community and ripples and stuff. So maybe there are some intentional ways to think about whether it's a working group or, you know, sort of like ways to sort of like move forward some of these articulations and strategies in a kind of collective way by thinking about a group of folks. And so as we will send some stuff out to this group that sort of reflects on what got shared here, but maybe also we'll do some intentional thinking about some asks as part of that, just in terms of ways that that conversation can, can continue and move forward. I know if there, for me, if there was a central listserv, I, listserv, I would gladly contribute to that. And if it had categories of like, you can put in information of artists coming when, here's some funding I found out about, just different things that people could go through quickly. Because just in organizing my own international activities, yeah. it's usually by partnering with different people mm -hmm. who know somebody who happens yeah. to do this, and mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. together we solve a problem to get people here yeah. or to make something happen. So. How many of you are using the World Theater Map at all? Just out of curiosity, some. I, I don't think it's a, it's an interesting. Like I don't think it entirely overlap. I mean, it's it has overlaps, but not it's not synonymous with things we're talking about here. But I'm wondering. I have to get a picture of the map. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kimchi. Kimchi. <laughs> Even a Facebook page would be really helpful. Yeah. Something that you mm -hmm. would kind of like, like rather than like a listserv that like constantly pops up in your inbox, uh, because there is so much amazing work being done, a Facebook page that you kind of check in on or sign up to receive alerts for. And even just posting like, hi, we're a theater who would like help with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. A Slack group, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Well, oh, maybe yeah. a super efficient, it's like yeah. the survey, but it's a Slack group, and you can oh. always go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. One, yeah. one challenge just with Facebook is if there are international artists where Facebook yeah. is blocked, you, they can't actually access mm -hmm. it, and so I would imagine that one where, because Slack you can get for free, and so that there can be, you can create different mm -hmm. channels. And, right, different yeah. channels, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. So how does that actually happen? Because then we'll go away like that. 
Yeah. Well, I think we're taking uh, GTI. We'll take responsibility for some communication out and follow up. I think anytime we talk, we think about the right network or mechanism. It ends up being a little like there's nothing that ends up being entirely inclusive because mm -hmm. there's there people have their mm -hmm. own barriers. Like I don't know how to use that or or sure, haven't, haven't used that platform. But I think we can. Um, I think the bigger. Uh, mandate I feel like out of this is to sort of like share out to this group with some real um, uh, opened out kind of opportunities for like next steps and communication um, that keep us moving forward and yes. we can like take suggestions in terms of what will be the best way to do that. Yeah. And then I think knowing that not everybody could be in this room even like at this conference or people Absolutely. who couldn't be at this conference that can we like concentric circleize ourselves out um, yes. and like so yeah. connect people to whatever we end up doing um, and ha yeah thank you <laughs> this feels like actually more than I think we internally anticipated it feels like a lot of momentum forward I think having had the pre-conferences and knowing mm -hmm. just that there was just really this one dedicated slot I think we felt like oh this might be kind of intimate and a little bit of an ebb of a and, if, and so it's really uh, uh, I think inspiring to sort of sit in this room and hear and see who's here and we'll um, you know we'll pick up the ball from here and stay in touch. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.